we come into this presence lifting up the name of Jesus and we hear the music playing and we see the people praising just forget about your word let your troubles fall behind you don't you wait another minute just get up and on your feet and get to
Yahweh is holy, holy, holy.
He came right now. Oh, you're good, God. God, you're good. God, you're awesome. God, you're worthy. And you're beautiful. Say thank you. Say thank you. You say thank you.
this morning, God, because it was not the alarm clock, it was not our name, but it was you, oh God, who touched us with your anger of love and woke us up early in this storm. A portion of health, a portion of strength in our right mind. God, we are grateful. God, we give you thanks because we realize that millions did not make it this morning. But because of your grace and your mercy, we are some of the ones who did. And God, we don't take that for granted, but we give you thanks.
after the quiet, I'll take the command. <laughs>
the gods and praise the gods. Spirit, the Lord's Spirit is not within you, then you get all stiffed up. You bound. Turn to your neighbor and say, Are you bound? Amen. Amen. That's a question. Amen. 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 We thank God for each and every one of you that are here today as we continue in our worship experience. We're going to take about missionary. We do what is called the missionary offering, whereby we take an offering to help those at home and abroad, those who are going through some financial trials and tribulations. We do two offerings here. So the first offering is simply our missionary offering to help those at home and abroad and ask that our ushers to prepare that. At the same time, we're going to ask uh, our church clerk if she would come and provide us with this morning's announcements. and said, I love you. I love you. See, see, they're both going to be in the seat. Let me tell you something. If you can't get up in the morning and look in the mirror and tell that person to hear you love you can't love nobody else. Yeah? I tell you, I get up in the morning, look in the mirror and say, I love you. I'm going to take good care of you today. If you, look, if you do that, then I know you're going to take good care of me. You're going to show some love my way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, now, how many of y'all got this morning and say, I hate you? <laughs> can't stand you. Get up in the morning and tell yourself, I love you because you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. How many of y'all are even made in the image of God? Yeah. The Bible says that God is love. Yeah. Amen? So now, now, I, I challenge you, every morning you get up, tell your children the same thing, and maybe they won't walk out the door acting all crazy and stuff. Maybe you won't walk out the door acting all crazy. I challenge you, you get up in the morning, after you, yeah, before you've done anything, get up in the morning, walk straight in the mirror, no matter how you look in hell, we'll be there in hell. Get up in the morning, walk in that mirror, and say, I love you, and I'm going to take care of you, because you're fearfully and wonderfully made, and you're made in hell. Will a, will a man rob God? Will a woman rob God? Will a child rob God? Will a musician rob God? Will a usher rob God? Will a fake technician rob God? We are not robbers of God, but we are givers of God today. The Bible says, Bring your tithes to the storehouse of God so that they might be meet in my house. And as we prepare to give to the Lord today, we're going to do this this way. I want you to be, because I, I want to see y'all probably saying, why are you starting? Why are you going out? Because I know some of y'all are going to roll up out of here. <laughs> as soon as this young lady says the last word of that, Wisdom. And see, I ain't even begging because I, I, I got a father who has owned houses in the land. I'm just giving you an opportunity to be a blessing to somebody else. Hope you wonder why they don't get nothing because you don't give nothing. So this is not what you see. I don't want you to run out of here and say, I gotta, I gotta wait clean. And then the next TV running around wondering why you can't make their own payments the rest of the week. This is an opportunity to give it to the Lord. Amen. Amen. The baskets on the outside will be for our she's not yet for our sister who is in on trial. Not before you. But before the Lord. Amen. 
baskets on the make the baskets on the, on the table, the red coming and the baskets for the church. We're going to ask that we start with those in, in, in the lower auditorium. Let me just say this real quick. First things first. Be so kind. Some folks like to put them on side. Y'all ain't that important. Turn them off. Now, I don't know why I even said that, because as soon as I say turn your cell phone on, somebody's cell phone will go ring. <laughs> Amen. I, I, I like to take mine off and leave it on, so if you be so kind as to just kind of turn it off. It's just time. Second, Brother Lee, would you, would you grab that door right? Well, 
maybe you need to go back into the scriptures once again and find out who it was that first came upon the resurrected Christ. And maybe you're even going to need to go a little deeper and find out who it was that met Christ at the well and was so moved by the word of God that she left her pot. I'm hoping that some of y'all leave your pot after the word goes forth today. And that woman went out and said, come see a man who's told me all things about myself. So when folks, folks begin to question and they say, some folks say, well, what are you doing? I'm just doing the will of God. Hello, lights. God has laid something on my heart and showed me something and some, some folk. And I just step out on faith, believing that God is going to equip them. And believing that God has given me some further help. Because y'all ain't going to kill me. Amen. I got some grandkids that I need to be around for to drive them as crazy as they driving me. And so God has sent some help. And I thank God for my two children. Amen. 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 In the ministry, in the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ. One of the things that you that is very unique about Rashida is that she does not have a problem going out into the highway, the byway, the alleyways, the hallways, the noways, in compelling folks to come to Christ. Even a little car said, I want all nine believers to come. And so she wanted folks. And I ran into a brother, I won't mention his name, I was in the store the other day and I ran into the brother, he said, and I know him, this brother don't believe in nothing. <laughs> Even he don't believe in nothing. <laughs> and then I said, uh, uh, so I uh, see Rashida's going to be doing her trial sermon tomorrow at the church. He said, yeah. You see, I think I'll be here. They were praised to know. <laughs> and he's one of those that always likes to challenge someone's intellect. He said, trial sermon. This means her first sermon, right? I said, no, she had, I said, this is a trial sermon. In the ministry, she did a, uh, this guy to try, he tries. I said, we have lay services, and she did a lay service one time, but that had nothing to do. This is a call to the ministry. Yeah. He said, I'll be here. I don't say if you're downstairs, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but I'm glad because she goes the extra mile Amen. to encourage for to come. Amen. Now, everybody out here, and she don't learn this as she goes along, brother. Right? Everybody in here don't love you, girl. Flat on your face. Some folk want to see you mess up. Some folk want, but all you got to do, baby, is step aside and let go. Even Jesus had a, had a Jewess. Look to your neighbor and say, It ain't you, is it? But we thank God for her. Pray for her. Pray for her. Because there are going to be times where there's only going to be three people in the house. And you still got to preach the gospel. There will be times when you don't feel like it. And you still got to preach the gospel. There are going to be times when you're hurting. Somebody that said something to hurt your spirit. And you still got to preach the gospel. So you pray for her. Pray for her, pray for her, pray for her. As she prepares to bring forth the word of God. I'm about to give birth, y'all. 
to the second child. Amen. Say, Sister Rashida Mayazli, let God use you. In his own way. In his own way. Give God some praise.
her ministry, she's going to find a song that will fit. I truly believe God has changed her. Do you believe that? If you know the song, sing along with me. Change. A change, all oh, change has come over to me.
she told me not to get it. I just wanted to be cute for the day. the most gracious and most merciful. I would like for you to give a big hand clap to the man that don't have a problem letting God use him. Amen. My pastor, yeah. Reverend Daniel yeah. Kirkland. Jesus Christ, or Paul for that matter, he was in jail also. How can you say? 
verse 5 states, You hypocrite, take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your own brother's eye. If I go too fast, just tell me to slow down. I'm trying so hard. I'm just so hyped, y'all. My husband like, slow down. <laughs> Well, do you know Peter and John in Acts 4 and 13 states, they had not been trained in schools, nor did they hold official positions in recognized religious circles. They had been with Jesus to speak to the multitude. So in Matthew chapter 23, 27 and 28 states, woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of dead men. I want y'all to stand up. We're about to get to the meat of the message. Come on, we're going to Acts chapter 7, verse 30 and 38. When you're ready, say amen. amen. Acts chapter 7, verse 30 and 38. Amen. After 40 years had passed, an angel appeared to Moses in the flames of a burning bush in the desert near Mount Sinai. When he saw this, he was amazed at the sight. As he went over to look more closely, he heard the Lord's voice. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses trembled with fear and did not dare to look. Then the Lord said to him, take off your sandals. The place where you are standing is holy ground. I have indeed seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their groanings and have come down to set them free. Now come, I will send you back to Egypt. This is the same Moses whom they have rejected with the words, who made you ruler and judge. He was sent to be their ruler and deliverer by God himself, yeah. through the angel who appeared to him in the bush. Yeah. He led them out of Egypt and did wonders and miraculous signs in Egypt, at the Red Sea, and for 40 years in the desert. This is that Moses who told the Israelites, God will send you a prophet like me from your own people. He was in the assembly in the desert with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with our fathers, and he received living words to pass on to us. Let the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. You may now be seated. If I had to leave you with a topic today, it would be don't judge me, I'm coming out. Looking at this passage first, we're going to examine who Moses was. Moses was born of a married Levite couple living in Egypt where Pharaoh the king ordered every boy that is born must be thrown into the Nile River, but let every girl leave. Moses' mother hid him for three months, but she couldn't take it anymore. So she sent him away in an ark in a river, and Pharaoh's daughter found the baby and named him Moses. The Levite mother that sent him away did not know that her child would be used to help them out of the land of Egypt later. For the youth in the congregation, Moses was adopted to another family. You may say to yourself, why my mom or dad don't want me? Or why did I have to be adopted by my grandma? Or why do my aunt have to raise me? But God always knows where to use you. You never know who God will use to bless a nation. When Moses was 40 years old, he decided to visit his fellow Israelites. He saw them being mistreated by an Egyptian, so he went to his defense and avenged him by killing the Egyptian. Moses thought that his own people would realize that God was using him to rescue them, but they did not. The next day, Moses came upon two Israelites. Men, are you brothers? Why do you want to hurt each other? But the man who was mistreating the other pushed Moses aside and said, who made you ruler or judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? When Moses heard this, he fled to Midian, where he settled as a foreigner and had two sons. So 40 years later, God needed Moses to complete a task for him to deliver the people out of the land of Egypt. So Moses in Exodus chapter 3, verse 10, said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. But I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. 
So I said to myself, Rashida, why would God use somebody that can't stop complaining and won't do what God said? And God said, well, in chapter 4, verse 12, 16, now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth, yes. and you can teach you what you shall say. But the Lord was so awesome, he said, I know you got a brother named Aaron, go get him. He can speak well because you're making me angry. Asking for me to do something for somebody else when I ask you to do the job. And I will speak unto him and put words in his mouth. And I will be with his mouth. And with his will, teach you what you shall do. So God trusted Moses and Aaron together to deliver the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Do you know that he used them together? A dream team. My husband always say, teamwork makes a dream work. And the Lord said, if they ask, I'm going too fast, y'all. Go ahead. All right. 
The children of Cheshire cried to Kobe and Shaq. Why deliver us out? Then leave us in, de in the desert for 40 years. They see the children of Esther of Asher marching to get them. They didn't believe Kobe. Kobe said, don't be afraid. Stand firm. And you will see what the deliverance of the Lord will bring you today. Then the Lord parted the Red Sea, and the children of Chester walked through on dry ground. The victory of AI army was complete. It was over. They were swallowed up by water. Now the children of Chester, after three days of freedom, needed water. The Lord provided. They needed food. The Lord provided manna. They needed water again, and he provided for 40 years. Each time they cried and complained to Kobe, the Lord heard their cries and delivered them. Then after all their trials, the Lord gave the Ten Commandments to live by Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 through 17. You shall not have any other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol of anything. I'm talking to y'all. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet thy neighbor's house. And 1 John chapter 2 verse 3 states, and we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. Yeah. If someone claims, I know God, but doesn't obey God's commandments, that person is a liar. And it's not, it's not living the truth in them. But those who obey God's word truly show how completely they love him. Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. Right. Comey said to the children of Chester, don't be afraid. God has come to test you. So that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. Yes. The Lord wants to commend us for our standing still and our commitment to worship in Him in all circumstances before judgment. Yes. We will be judged for our responses to the commandments. Yes. Are you ready to be judged today? Or are you ready to worship God for what He has already done? If you put the blood on the door today for the Lord to pass over your house with destruction, you must first get saved to prove that you believe. Yes. Don't judge me, I'm coming out. Yes. Do you believe God came to earth in the form of flesh? was crucified, knelt to the cross, died three days later, and rose again, and he left us with the Holy Spirit. There is hope for the sick, the disease, the poverty, the poor, the unbearable woman, the hopeless, the fatherless, the unbeliever, the backslider. But you must first accept him as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I was judged on earth by God to be trusted with his word, to let the people trust to know we're coming out of destruction. Your judgment will be according to your worship, for what he has done in your life. Yeah. So the next time someone say, you mm, and you, mm, you, you, mm, you say to them, don't judge me for having kids out of wedlock, like, I'm coming out. Yeah. Don't judge me for being a drug dealer, I'm coming out. Yeah. Don't judge me for going to the club, I'm coming out. Yeah. Don't judge me for going to jail, I'm coming out. Yeah. Don't judge me for being a pole dancer, I'm coming out. Yeah. Don't judge me for being broke, for being an adulterer, for being homosexual, for being a mental abuser, I'm coming out. Yeah. For being miserable, for being poor, I cried one day holding my door. 
daughter. And she said, why are you crying? I said, I miss my mom. And she said, mom, you're supposed to love Jesus more than you love her. Yeah. That helped me so much because I love my mom more than anything. Now I need Jesus so much more for comfort and worship. Him. I never realized. I never realized that I had to truly love Christ first until I heard it from a child. You never know what form the messenger will come. But God speaks aloud. We just have to listen. I'm going to tell you a short story. I got this from my customer. She's here somewhere. <laughs> a man was in the ocean, and his boat was sinking. And a pirate came along to help him. And he said, no thanks, I'm waiting on Jesus. Then a fisherman came, and he said, no thanks, I'm waiting on God. Then a man on the jet boat came along, and he said, oh, I waited on the Lord as he was sinking. But when he drowned, he went to heaven. And God said, what are you doing here? He said, I was waiting for you to save me. God said, I'm not coming back in the flesh. Those three people had the spirit of me to help you. So I sent a messenger to save you. You weren't listening to the call of help from the people. So I'm your messenger today. Don't let this opportunity slip by you and not get saved by your Lord today. I was trying to get y'all some nailers, but I couldn't find them at BJ's. So I got y'all look at this new nailer pack, right? Y'all see it? Y'all know what nailers look like. They're so good. But I'm always eating. <laughs> well, I said to myself one day when I was eating them, Rashida, do you want Jesus now or later? Now I'm asking you, do you want Jesus Christ now or later? The flavor in your sin, it is good now. But what happens later? sin if you don't have Jesus. Because the way it looks in is death. Jesus is good now and later. If you need one now, you will have one later. But what about when the pack is gone? In Christ, he never runs out of goodness. The color might be on the tongue, on your tongue, from the residue of the candy coloring. But what about the stain you leave behind when you corrupt somebody's life with sin or your own and you don't have Christ in your heart? When you open the candy, you are ready to tear it up. I know I am. And it will be going in a few bites. How about when you open the book, the Bible? You can eat forever and ever. Because the Word gives you something good to eat every day. God is good now and later. To the youth in the congregation, when you accept Jesus Christ, you can say to your friends, look at me now. Look at
in the next yard. And he bought some later. He's a burden bearer now. And he's faithful later. He's a healer now. And he's a lawyer later. He's a great now. And he's all that later. He's merciful now. And he's gracious later. He'll hug you now. And he'll talk to you later. He'll fill your heart. Lord Jesus. 
Jesus. Because I'm a sinner. Forgive my sins. Cleanse me with your blood. Make me clean. And I will be clean. Come into my heart. Save my soul. I no longer belong to Satan. I belong to Jesus. I am here forever. And I am born again.
nobody greater. How many of you know there's nobody greater? Nobody greater. I don't know about you, but I searched all over. I couldn't find nobody. I looked high and I looked low. And I still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Our Father and our God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Acknowledging that there's nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. You are the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. We thank you, God, for the word that has gone forth. We thank you, God, that we're coming out. We thank you, God, that you're good now and later. We thank you, God, for what you've done in this place. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for having your way. We thank you, Lord, for the word. We thank you, Lord, God, for the, the souls. Those that have accepted you, God. We thank you, Lord, that they have broken free from bondage. We thank you that you've been set, they've been set free. And whom the Son has set free is free indeed. God, we thank you for, that there's freedom through you. We thank you, Lord, for your salvation. We thank you, God, that even when we didn't deserve it, you still did it for us. We thank you, God, for what you've done in our midst. We thank you that all heaven is rejoicing right now. We thank you, Lord God, for what has been done in this place. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. We thank you that your word said, as you be lifted up, that you will draw all men unto you. We thank you for those that you have drawn today. We thank you, Lord, that those that have come to give their life to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you would strengthen them, encourage them. Let them know, Lord, that you'll never leave them nor forsake them. We thank you, God, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the messenger, God. Restore unto her all that she's given out. Restore unto her, God. We thank you for a fresh anointing to fall upon her, Lord. To continue to preach the word with Holy Ghost boldness and power. We thank you, Lord, for each and every person here, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that words shall saturate their hearts and their minds, Lord. To let them know, Lord God, that no matter what they're going through, that you're still there. No matter what the situation, that you're able to bring them through. If they would just trust in you with all their heart and lean not to their own understanding, but in all their ways acknowledge you. You said that you would direct your path. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your direction. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for everything that you've given us. And we thank you right now for who you are. We just honor you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. That's why it's important not, not only that, understand the recovery. Folk walk out of the house of God without the covering. It's one thing to be preached to. It's one thing to sing the songs of Zion. It's one thing to praise and to worship. But then they leave out and then something crazy happens. All because they're not covered. That's called the benediction. That's the covering of God. Sometimes I'm in service two or three times a day and I'm so tired, I'm like, no, I gotta get out of here. I remember, I don't wanna leave here without being covered. The covering of God. The word is important. Preaching the gospel, the word is important. But now that I got the word in me, God, I want you to cover me. I want you to protect me so that I can probably tell somebody else. Amen? Amen. I ain't going no place else if they go home. If you go home and get out of this hot sun and go home and kick back and do whatever it is you're going to do. Amen? Amen. To all those of you who are still here, not only wait to see what the Lord tells me to do, but also to make sure you get covered. Amen? Amen. Tell your neighbor, I want to be covered. I want to be covered. We're waiting for our the other folks to come back in. God has been good. 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 We thank God for it. What's that? What's that? She's good. church. I'm going in no uncertain order except the way they're listed. So if it's you, please raise your hand. Dwayne Lee. Dwayne is an 11-year-old here of Chester who would like to become a member of Community Baptist Church as a candidate for baptism. Next 
Patriarch Charles Crutter. I hope I said that right. Calpine Drive of Sharon Hill would like to become a member of Community Baptist Church as a candidate for baptism. Let's see after Sean Wilson Farrell. would like to become a member of Community Baptist Church as a candidate for baptism. That's Tyrone Ballard from yeah. Brookhaven. would like to become a member of Community Baptist Church as a candidate for baptism. Next we have Stacy Miller of Former member of St. John AUMP would like to become a member of Community Baptist Church as a candidate for baptism. <laughs> Next we have Ayala Springfield of Chester. Would like to become a member of Community Baptist Church as a candidate for baptism. We have Kumar Springfield of Chester. I'd yeah. like to become a member of Community Baptist Church as a candidate for baptism. Yeah. Next we have Shalay Thomas. Yeah. Sister of Minister Become former member of Harambe Baptist Church in Philadelphia, would like to become a member of Community Baptist Church as a candidate for baptism. And last but not least, we have Joseph Carter of Chester. Would like to become a member of Community Baptist Church as a candidate for baptism.
we thank God for you. We thank God that you uh, don't, didn't allow anybody to judge you. Stop, come on. Amen. We are not a perfect church. We got our issues. We simply serve a perfect God. And I always tell folks this. Folks say, well, you know, I don't go to church or I don't go to worship at that place because, you know, they got, they got hypocrites. Well, you go to work every day. Like your hypocrites on the job. Sometimes you go to work and you work overtime. Them same hypocrites. You go home in your household. Some of them same hypocrites in it. But you still sit down at the dining room table and eat them. Guess what? This is your home. This is your church home. You may not be perfect. Please don't think that. Hey, when you find the perfect church, let me know. Amen. I don't want to be there. Amen. 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 We thank God for each and every one of you. And see that Sister Johnson, she done changed up. She in her cooking clothes now. <laughs> she want to see her. She'll make sure that she'll get the information from Sister Williams. She'll make sure you have everything you need for that day. Amen. Amen. We love you desperately. We love you desperately. And we welcome you in the Community Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. Give God some praise. Give God some I love you in a man. study to show myself. Yeah. A 
to God, work in me, and not be ashamed. Rightly divide the word of truth. And so now I'm coming to study to my children. Stand up, my son. Let me say this to y'all. Let me say this to y'all. As any good parent would tell you, don't talk about my children. Don't, don't have a conversation with my children about what they're doing and what they're not doing. Right. Come tell me. If you think my children are doing something wrong, right, come tell me. Amen? Amen. God has given me the authority for their ministry as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ here at the New Baptist Church. Come tell me. Amen. Amen. And let me correct what that means Amen. 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 When you become a pastor, I'll come tell you. Amen. Amen. But these are my children in the ministry. I love destiny. Amen? Amen. She already told me before. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Minister. <laughs> Minister. <laughs> See, I got. I got to get you to that. Yeah, look, it took me a while. So I got. I, I, I got Minister Graham down pat. I got Minister Graham. Now I got to get to Minister Lee. <laughs> Minister Lee had already told me we were back there talking, and, and I appreciate the fact that you're always talking to the pastor. Give, please give me a hand so she said, Pastor, I just want you to know we got one more portion of our vacation next week. You're a blessed man, brother. Y'all going to Miami and all that good stuff. Oh, God, oh God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But uh, she already told me, but we thank God for her. We thank God for all of you. Uh, I see all my, my hairdressers up around and here, boy, y'all. <laughs> Y'all make sure y'all get y'all head dead at our people's faces, all right, amen? Oh, the head just put your hands up. Come on, y'all, but y'all better have some cards up in there. Y'all better have some cards up in there. Y'all better, uh, look, 
Well, it's out there. It's out there. Hey, man, we thank God for all. We thank God for every last one. Our hearts and minds are clear. Tell somebody the Lord loves you so well. Uh, stay right where you are. Stay right where you are. Stay right where you are.